I am thoroughly and completely convinced that there is not a single member of the mainstream media on the left or the Biden administration that took even one year of political psychology, or really any kind of psychology for that matter. They are doing everything they can to make Donald Trump seem like the solution to every problem we have. And they're oblivious to it. With everything that's coming down the road for this country and for the world, they are focusing on why people on the right shouldn't be overly upset about the raid at Mar-a-Lago. That's what they're focusing on. It is the most insane thing ever. As if anything that would have ever been taken from an FBI raid, anybody on the right would have taken seriously. In less than 100 days, Donald Trump, and you can quote me on this, Donald Trump is going to take complete control of the Republican Party, including those in office, after this November. And after that, he is going to be de facto in control of the U.S. government. Because when you look at the complete ineptitude of the uh, executive branch, the other two branches are primarily going to be controlled by him. And then two years after that, it's over. It's not even close. And there's a great um, analogy that you can share with your liberal friends. And this is something I think that they'll get. This is, of course, Zach McGowan playing the character Charles Vane, the pirate from Black Sails. Now, he was, in the series, the most feared pirate in all of the Caribbean. Him and his crew, you did not want to cross. If they saw something and they wanted it, they found a way to come take it. Now, put yourself in a position of living on an island somewhere in this region. And you had to choose between siding with this particular pirate and his crew, the uh, hostess Humani Generous, the enemy of all mankind, or siding with the British. Now, here's the hard part about making this decision. No harm will come to you as long as you do exactly what I say. You see, to side with and be living under the protection of this most feared pirate, he would be the final arbiter as to what you did or did not do. If you didn't think you could live under those circumstances, meaning be a part of his crew, then you would risk being a target. Now, there were others that were in power. They weren't pirates. Captains of industry. The vast majority of their wealth and their power was out of the reach of Charles Vane. But... You didn't live among them. So their ability to protect you was somewhat limited. They kind of took care of themselves, so to speak. And if you could somehow weasel your way into their good graces, you might be able to live under that veil of protection. So what do you choose? Especially the ladies out there. The the quote-unquote good guys that may or may not be able to protect you or throw in with the bad guys. Throw in with the pirates. Knowing that if you do, and you do as they say, regardless of your own opinion, you'll have 100% their protection. Some might say, well, I want to go off and live on my own. Well, then you take the chance of running afoul of both of them, technically. What do you choose? You see, this is the key. This is the key. Events that have emotions attached to them, you will never, ever forget. 
Maya Angelou said, People will forget what you said. They will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And right now, the liberal media and the Biden administration, pardon me, is making everyone in North America feel afraid for their future, for their hopes. Some people don't even have hope anymore. They've just given up on it. And there's one guy out there, one guy saying, hey, don't give up hope. Hang on for just a couple of years. I'm coming back and I'm going to fix things. Now, whether or not he's a good guy or not doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Charles Vane is a good guy. He's the one out there giving people hope. He's the one out there people are believing in. It doesn't matter what his methods are. It doesn't matter that perhaps some people might have to give up a way of doing things that they might prefer. And I have proof for that here. Major evangelical leader says Trump gets a mulligan on Stormy Daniels' affair. Family Research Council's Tony Perkins is just glad Trump will, quote, punch back at liberals. See, that's all the evangelical right is thinking about right now. Yeah, okay, Trump's a bit of a player. Trump has a very unorthodox lifestyle. We would like him to perhaps be a bit more Christian. But if we have to choose, if we have to choose between the pirates and these guys, these guys are going to lose every single time, especially now with everything that everybody's facing. They want a Charles Vane in charge. They want a guy like this in charge. Even if, and this is what's killing the media. The media is going to come out and say, but don't you disagree with this and this and this and this? People are going to say, yeah, maybe I do. But he's still a better leader than Biden. As many things as I could lay at the feet of Donald Trump, I can lay a hundred at the coward in the West Wing. And even the people on the left are calling Biden a coward. They're calling Kamala Harris a coward. It's no longer about the morality. It's about the ability to lead. And this all really goes to psychology and the brain and how it works. Biden has made people feel afraid. Biden has made people feel ashamed and worrisome, and full of anxiety for the future. Say whatever you want about Trump. He didn't evoke that set of emotions. He made some people angry. Pardon me. He made some people angry, and he made some people react viscerally to some things he said, but there was not a, a fear aspect with Trump. And they're trying to go on with all sorts of experts saying, well, this is why you shouldn't be upset about the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago. Just the idea of an FBI raid anywhere is going to make people mad. It's going to make people upset. Google emotional memory and the brain and how it works. And how experiences, when you add emotions to them, drive literally everything you do, we do, as human beings. Amygdala hijacking, survival mechanism that lets us react to things before the rational brain has time to mull things over. It doesn't matter how much you rationalize. Well, 
Trump can't be a good leader because of this, that, or the other. That'll never work against feelings. Never. And that's what the left doesn't understand. And they would have learned in Psych 101. I can show you a couple other examples. People get all fired up about this thing with uh, the older folks here in Florida and the, the key parties and the swinging and all that. You see, these folks have been making decisions, being able to mull over the whole risk-reward analysis. They've been doing this their whole lives. One of the big pushbacks is, haven't you heard about the STD rates? You know what their calculation is? They've already, most of them, buried people, friends from cancer and leukemia and different things like this. If the worst thing they've got to worry about is a run of antibiotics, for them, not that big a deal. They've been poked and prodded and examined and cut open and sewed up and cut open and sewed up again. And they've taken so many pills in their lifetime. Not that big of a deal to them. They don't really care what anybody else thinks. If they could grab one more experience of feeling young, which is what they do. They go out and they hop into the sack with people and they close their eyes and they pretend they're 25 again. And they're in the very last, last stages of their life. So they don't know. And besides, for them, the world outside especially with Biden in charge, and they just want to forget it. They just want to forget it. You see, and that's kind of the great thing about kids. When I put this uh, scenario together, of grid down, power down, um, you've got a survival group, and there are these little seven, eight, nine-year-old street urchins that are peeking in windows. You see, at seven, eight, nine, kids that age, you don't have the ability to do the risk-reward analysis because you don't have all the information. You only do, kids this age, are basically little versions of pirates. All they care about is what feels good now. So you actually have the ability, unlike when they're adults, to do things, to create events that will change the directions of their lives. See, if you would leave these go, they become Charles Vane in reality. You take a bunch of boys, you throw them out in the middle of the forest somewhere, and you don't give them any guidance, and you don't give them any uh, correction, and you just let them do whatever, whenever, with whoever. As great as Charles Vane sounds, long term, not a good thing. And this is, I guess, what I'll leave with here. It's a clip. It's here on YouTube. It's called, You Can't Let a Youngin Decide for Himself. And in this episode of uh, um, The Andy Griffith Show, Season 2, Episode 6, Opie's Hobo Friend, young Opie is, makes a friend of a guy who's, you know, he's a, highway, he's a railroad car jumper. And he shows him this wonderful free life of no rules and stealing whatever you want. And to a kid, to a kid, that's, you know, wonderful. And the quote that uh, Andy says, of course, is, you can't let a youngin decide for himself. He'll grab at the first flashy thing with shiny ribbons on it. Then when he finds out there's a hook in it, it's too late. Wrong ideas come packaged with so much glitter that it's hard to convince him that other things might be better in the long run. All a parent can do is say, wait and trust me and try to keep temptation away. And so he has to run off this hobo and then go back and try to convince Opie that, you know, as fun as that was, it's completely the wrong thing. And this is from the 60s. But in contrast... In contrast, where we're at right now is regardless of whether or not having a quote-unquote pirate in charge is good or not, it's going to be the eventuality. 
because Donald Trump has picked up on that pirate mentality. People don't care anymore. They just don't want to feel ashamed anymore. They don't want to feel afraid anymore. They don't want to worry about the future anymore. And right now there's one answer to this. And it's not Joe Biden. It's not Kamala Harris. It's nobody from the left. It's Donald J. Trump. Simply based on the emotions of the fact. In a situation like this, it's a hell of a call to make. Are you going to throw in with the bad guys? Because they're going to get shit done? Or be your own man? Find another powerful group? Maybe they exist. Maybe they don't. But being by yourself? That's a tough call too. But right now the emotion is all on the side of those behind Trump. And it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And the way our government is structured with the Supreme Court set the way it is, with the huge flip that's going to happen in the midterms, it's over for the left, for the Democrat Party. For a very long time. So, anyway, I will leave it there. But once again, guys, keep your eyes open and your head on a swivel. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.